Na ja. Yeah, this is the um, about the eighth morning, and probably the final one I've been doing on this painting outside the Buenania Madrasa in Fez. It's been closed to the public um, since the start of the pandemic, but the, the, the door and archway is magnificent. I've painted it a number of times. Uh, this painting is the result of uh, a fairly elaborate drawing I did, and then I transposed that manually to the canvas back home in the studio and then I came out here every morning to, to work on it um, and to paint generally from about half seven till uh, about nine o'clock when it gets very busy with traders and motorbikes and mules. Everything here has been done from life apart from the mule, uh, which I did use a photograph. I, I tend not to use photography a lot. Um, in fact, even the people here have been very gracious. They've actually stood and posed for me. I, again, I did drawings, very quick drawings for them to start with. So I've added those um, back home in the studio, um, not necessarily always um, on the spot. Um, so it's been really nice working on this every morning for about the last, not continuously, but I'd say about eight mornings during the last month um, in order to get the right atmosphere. And then once this is done, there's a couple of others that I need to finish off this week, early in the morning, and then I can have my mornings back again. Not that that's a problem, because I really like uh, working early in the morning. I tend to do my most focused work. If I start later in the day, I get less done. Yes, I'm kind of nearly done with this one. I'm just adding a few final marks to it. Um, it's probably one of the most finished things I've done in a while. I'd actually like to do a huge canvas of this, but obviously as I'm booking on the spot, it's not necessarily practical. Um, but who knows, um, there's time. Um, it's been really nice in this pandemic in a way. I know it's not been very good for a lot of people trade-wise, but um, to have a lot more space, because normally this place would be heaving with tourists by now. Um, so it's been a lot quieter uh, throughout really most of the year. Uh, although obviously those of us living in Fez and the Fasis themselves are really hoping that um, people can come back soon because um, it's really starting to affect people's businesses because obviously much of the old city relies on manual trade, tourism, artisanship and so it's been quite a blow to people's livelihoods. Okay, back in my house in Fez Medina. The most opulent studio I've ever had. It's wonderful and a beautiful home. Um, even on a really rainy day, it's just great light here. So anyway, I'm painting a still life now. As you, some of you will know, I kind of do, I hadn't been doing still lifes until the last decade and then now I do them quite frequently. They're um, an opportunity to work in a more calm and sustained manner without the uh, uh, the necessity to ask models to have break or pay them or wait for them to turn up. In fact, the first still life I did in recent years was um, when um, I had a model who was late. And so I started painting the background and then it turned into a very elaborate still life. This one's fairly smallish for what I would do, but 
I don't know, maybe during the lockdown I've kind of gained greater degrees of patience, concentration, finesse, I don't know. Um, plus I've found a supplier who I can get excellent fine brushes from. As you know, I often paint quite broadly, but this is a very finished piece. Um, and it's, it's old Amazigh Berber pots, which I found in and around the markets here. Um, and uh, earthy colours. Traditional Moroccan architecture is actually quite earth coloured, even though in the 19th century you've got lots of brighter colours. They generally consisted of more earthy colours for which this is quite representative, both in the pots and the, the tiles on the floor. I love living in this house. It's, um, it's just magical. My maternal, sorry, paternal grandparents had a house from 1810 and I thought it was magical. And when I was about six or seven and they moved to a modern concrete block, I was really disappointed. So this house is about 400 years old and it has the sort of right degree of atmosphere, history and light to inspire me. Every day I'm inspired to paint either here or outside because the light is so magical. It's a cliche, but so many painters have come to, you know, North Africa, Morocco, the South, particularly us Northerners, to be mesmerized by the light. I've traveled many, many countries and this is probably the one with the most amazing light for my temperament. And so every day I find something astonishing to paint. And, um, I rarely get bored, I rarely, if ever, actually. And I rarely find something that, I really struggle to find something to paint. Rarely do I think, oh, what am I gonna to paint today? I'd like to paint, um, you know, certain people and certain portraits more often, but that requires time and trust here, because obviously, culturally, it's, it's quite sensitive painting portraits, although I've never had a problem, touch wood. People generally love it. Um, but uh, doing still lives is, it's a nice, calm, meditative process. I can listen to Handel or whatever opera I've got on, which is Handel at the moment. And um, sometimes it's quite like meditation. I kind of almost go into a trance and forget the time. Um, so hours go by and I don't really notice. Yeah, from one extreme to another. Um, this is an example of alla prima work, uh, which basically means uh, in Italian, uh, alla prima from the first. So, or in French, au premier coup, or in English, wet in wet, i.e. the painting is done completely when it's wet. Um, no alterations, no drying, no going back to it. It's kind of quite a high wire way of working. This I did in about an hour and a half. Um, it's of, um, a young man who cuts my hair every week, or more accurately, shaves my head <laughs> of the hair that I've got. Um, and uh, yeah, this is quite an exciting way of working. It either works or it doesn't. Um, obviously, to keep the sitter animated um, and and not start to look bored, one has to work really, really quickly. Um, so I tend to, with paintings like this, go straight in with the paint. Very little underdrawing. Um, if that, just a very basic underdrawing in burnt umber. Um, and then with very large brushes, unlike the small brushes I was using on the still life, I, um, bathe, I work with those. So here I am on, I think, the fifth or the sixth day of this painting. Um, it's gone quite quickly, actually, even though it's quite complex. As I was saying the other day, um, it's been interesting how during the lockdown, I've kind of, and uh, the confinement in Morocco, I was saying to someone last night that I thought that um, I hadn't really been that busy. But actually, 
it's because I'm used to running around in London and to a lesser extent here, busy being busy and not actually busy doing anything of quality and finding it uneasy or feeling uneasy not doing anything because I'd be on a tube or in a bus or whatever or doing other work in order to kind of make myself feel better. So in a way it's been an education in presence. Um, and also I've found that I've been able to, to concentrate more. There are fewer distractions. I feel slightly monastic here sometimes. Um, hence maybe the concentration much of the time on still lives because there's something kind of contemplative about it, about them. Um, obviously there's a Western tradition and still life of memento mori, you know, remembrances of mortality and or the passing of time or just a celebration of stillness. And so, so I suppose there's been a lot more of that this year. So this is me on the upper balcony on what is the third floor. And this uh, is another great studio place because of the light coming here. Um, I've also spent most of the year in lockdown perfecting my lime plastering. So I've done most of the lime plaster here in a traditional manner. Uh, no concrete, no dryers, nothing, just absolutely traditional methods. It just needs one final coat, which I'll probably do in the spring. Another thing I've found really beneficial during the lockdown is sort of revisiting old uh, skills and um, learning from them. Often I paint from life, portraits I always paint from life, um, but sometimes obviously people have a, a short amount of time. So I've been kind of working in a more Renaissance manner, which would be working on a highly finished drawing, some of which you can see later in the film. Um, and from that highly finished drawing and then knowing the person, I'm often able to work in paint from it uh, and partly from memory, which seems to be working quite well. It's sort of a dis distillation of the person. So this is one of my friend uh, Abdel, who's from Southern Morocco. He's now living in Germany, actually. I did this last summer from a drawing which he has, but I have the photograph of the drawing. And so I was pleased to be able to actually replicate him from that drawing and still have it as if it's been done from life. Similarly, the one of the girl there, and these two girls have been done from drawings. Um, and then also, there's another one I've had up here. This is a uh, partly finished of my bedroom, which is also partly finished because uh, it needs plastering although I quite like it like this.